Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be swapping out the hard disk and putting in an SSD. Um, I've just run the Crystal Mark uh, benchmark test on the hard disk. Uh, these are the values. Um, I'll be putting a screenshot of this over on my blog, so if you wanted to check that out. Um, the SSD I'm putting in is a Samsung. I've already got it connected in the back here. It's an 850 Pro, um, one terabyte hard disk. Um, that'll be going in. Uh, let's get a screenshot of that. Okay. Um, I purchased this with the cable, um, and I've downloaded the migration software. So I've already cloned the drive, but the software is very easy to use. Um, I can give a quick tour of that. Um, actually, it's probably already installed. So let's just run the application here. Data migration. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to do the data migration, but once you plug in the SSD, it'll detect that. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to start, if I actually press the start here. Uh, I think you're given the option uh, not to actually do it. Um, let's just go ahead. Yeah, so it shows the target drive, uh, shows your source drive, the target drive. You press start, um, and if it's on a USB 3 port, uh, the image probably takes less than 15, 20 minutes. Um, if you plug it, in, plug it into a USB 2 port, it takes a bit longer. But So it's been cloned. Um, I'm not going to shut off the laptop and then proceed to swap out the drive. So let's shut this down. Okay, I think that should be shut down. So I can make sure I keep Top in view here. Okay. So in the back here, I'm going to remove the battery. Okay, battery's fairly compact. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove, let's see, a total of one, two, three, four, five, five screws, I believe. I don't probably six, maybe you'll have to remove that. So they're very small Phillips head screws. And for those that looked at my previous video, uh, the first unit I had purchased had an M2 drive. I thought I was getting a uh, 2.5 inch S uh, SSD. It turned out it was an M2, so I didn't have the cable or anything to actually connect a, a 2.5 inch drive. <clears throat> so I returned that, and then it turned out the price actually came down. So all in all, I saved about $1,000 by getting the 500 gig hard disk. Um, it's a little pain. So I saved about $1,000 getting the hard disk option, which more than pays for itself to swap in the SSD now. The 
just sort of like snaps in there. So it's got all these little tabs on it that you have to snap out. <clears throat> okay, so this is where the M2 drives would go in. Uh, the previous unit had one of the M2 drives in there. This is the hard disk. So I believe this just pulls out. Okay, it took me a little while to disconnect this SATA connector. Um, it's pretty tight in there. Pulling up the hard disk, you can now swap that out. So here we see the drive connector, and it's got this little, this should just pop off. Sorry. This little rubber padding around the edges here. Okay. And this is a Seagate 500 gig hard disk in here. <clears throat> Let's disconnect the cable. Okay. My SSD, put it in cable, looks about correct. Okay, that just snaps in there. Let's put this dry caddy back on. And there are little little knobs in there that should go into where the screw holes are. Okay, pop that in, pop that in. Pop that in. I guess that's how it goes. So I can slide this in now. Okay, now let's fit in this cable. Okay, and if all goes well, we should boot up with the SSD. So let me at least put the battery back in. And I'll be right back uh, when we boot it up. Okay, so here we've booted up with the SSD. And now we'll run that same uh, Crystal Mark disk benchmark. Uh, and we'll compare the numbers.
The Prime 95 program just kicked in, so that popped up the CPU. <coughs> Shouldn't affect the drive performance, though. And we can already see that it's much faster than the hard disk. And I'll post a screenshot of this uh, Crystal Mark benchmark as well on the blog so they can be compared. To clone, it was to clone it was pretty straightforward. Um, it just took time to have a copy of all the data over. Uh, since it was a pretty clean machine, there wasn't much to copy over. I think there was like 50 gigs or something like that. I'll be reviewing. I also have the the uh, docking station, so I'll be reviewing that. That has a lot of ports. It makes it very convenient to to connect to external displays and then just to pick it up and go. So that'll be in a future video. <clears throat> as well as there was one request to compare it with the W540. So I'll compare the overall uh, look and feel of the, each machine. Um, and then I'll also do a benchmark on how long the battery lasts. Uh, on the 540, I have the extended battery, so I can't really compare them. But I'll at least uh, run them, run them both, um, and give some idea of a normal workload, how long it should last. Uh, and then running the Prime 95, which taxes the CPU. Um, so full workload, how long it should last. And it looks like the disk benchmark is almost done. <clears throat> Overall, uh, swapping out the drive was pretty straightforward. The only tricky part was that SATA cable. Um, I had to use a screwdriver to sort of pop it out of its socket. Um, other than that, everything just popped out. Uh, put everything back in. Uh, it was probably five minutes total. Okay, so I'll be stopping this video now. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you would like to see anything else in future videos.